Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Warhammer Underworlds for the channel and Elathene's Soul Raid is getting their second showing today, this time going up against the Vampires, the Crimson Court, which I think are roughly from around the same era of releases. They have the same card back on their objectives and power cards etc, so presumably they were roughly around the same time. They have the same looking stat cards, so this should be a more balanced affair I guess. Uh, dice rolls. Uh, if dice rolls are even on both sides rather and no side is particularly favoured by them. That said, um, the roll for who gets the, the three objectives to place rather than the two has already been done. And the Crimson Court's roll was literally all hammers. Which would be an absolutely fantastic roll during the game, but when you're trying to seize initiative, not so much. But anyway, let's take a quick look at both sides, remind you of who's who, and then get started. So we have the Crimson Court with one of the opposing sides still visible, but that's okay. We have... Anais Curseborn over here with the wings, we have Velis von Fane with the Joker-esque hair, we have Gorath the Enforcer, tall guy with the huge mace at the back there, and they are being led by Prince Duval at the front. They get hungry, they lose their hunger tokens fully, they will inspire at the end of that phase, and they start each round with gaining one hunger. They can also become blood-starved if they have three, I think it is, which also gives them access to some other frenzied relayed powers but they only inspire if they actually cure their hunger for at least one round. And so Elathane's Soul Raid being led by the man himself, Elathane the Ill-Fated is his full title. And there he is right there. At the back there, the one with the pale blue skin is Tamiel. And then we have the one whose name I just do not know how you're supposed to pronounce. Furaran, Furiran, I don't know, I'll just say Furan, let's say. The kind of gladiator looking one at the back here. They have a spinefish, or yeah, it is spinefish, not spinfish, and they don't give up glory if killed, they also can't activate, they can be held off the table and come down during a turn if they wish, they can also be placed outside of a starting hex, and then we have Duin Claw, which is again pretty weird, it's D-U-I-N Claw, so Duin Claw I guess is how you pronounce it, and they all inspire on turn two. Simple as that. There is a taxis card that we saw last time, I think, which can also let them inspire in turn three, but they are set that they will always, of the, in the second of three rounds, be inspired. So, that about covers it. You can go see their first showing where we're going a bit more detail about how they work uh, from last time. But for now, we're going to get set up, deployed, and we'll be back after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. And we are back with setup complete. Crimson Court to your left with Prince Deval down here, Anais there, Velis there and Godath up there. We have the crab doing cloth right there next to Elithin himself and then these two lackeys right at the back here but they're fast and the one with the spear likes doing a run up and chuck and he's got range oh, 2 or 3 depending on which attack you do, yeah. So he's comfortable back there. The spinefish is not starting on the table so the way it can come back onto the table and I'll just read it because it's very, his card is very wordy. Look at that. Uh, it's a reaction you can do even if it's not on the table after an opponent's power step. You can remove all shoal tokens from the battlefield and place a shoal token in an empty hex. So that's all one action. It's just a very overly wordy way of saying you can have one shoal token on the table and you can move it around. And if there is a shoal token already, you can remove it to place the fish down. That's simple as that. So trying it this way this time to see if it works out any better. With that, let's jump into one uh, round one of three rather with Elethane Soul Raid going first. Oh, it would of course help if first of all I flipped over the objectives, <laughs> totally forgot that. So there's objectives 2 and 4 and then we have 1, 3 and 5 over here for Elethane Soul Raid. There we go, now we can get started. So the first act of the game was Tamiel who did a charge action back from where he started. He moved forwards 4 into the cover hex here and did his range 3 hex attack, chucking that spear with the rope attached. It is specifically called Throne Harpoon. Three dice looking for swords, so he got two successes, which Prince Duval spectacularly whiffed on protecting against. Normally that range attack only does a single point of damage, however if it's done as part of a charge action, it has a rule called impact, so it does plus one damage, so that is two out of Duval's four health. It does also have a rule called Riptide, where during the drive back step you can actually push them instead of just doing the optional pushback. He is going to take advantage of the push this time, and push Duval back there just so he's out of spell retaliation range, but if he'd wanted to, he could have moved him there, could have moved him there. It's a push, not a 
Uh, sorry, it's a place, not a push, essentially. In the power phase, Cloud of Midnight is being played. We saw this last time, and I think that's meant to be Tamiel on the art, I'm not 100% sure. But it's choose one friendly fighter until the ne end of the next activation. They can't be the target of attack actions, they can't be pushed, pulled, otherwise affected by cards, etc. He's basically invulnerable, and that is being used on Tamiel, so he is now safe down where he is. Blood Vial is being played by the Crimson Court, but it is not being used to remove hunger tokens for once, it is being used for the heal one effect. So of that two damage that Deval took, it is actually just back down to one, meaning he has three health remaining. So first up for the Crimson Court was Gorath the Enforcer who did a charge of an entire one hex. He has range two on that gigantic mace of his and he swung it at doing claw, two dice looking for hammers and it was a spectacular whiff with nothing you can do about it, so that's just a waste. Totally waste. Uh, you might notice there was a token there, that's because after handling the power phase, that we'll talk about in a second, that is what we're just going to use as a show token. You don't get given any kind of unique token, so you just use the generic ones that can mean anything. So that is a show token right there, which means after the next enemy activation, the, sh the, the spinefish can spawn in if it wishes to. In the power phase, Driven to Hunt was played. As long as Deval is on the table, it can be played. You either give one hunger token to each friendly fighter within two of him, or you push one friendly fighter within two of him, one hex. It is the latter that's being done. Anais Curseborn is going whoop, which is a mighty move and a half. Well, it's a game of single hex charging because that's what Dune Claw did as the second activation for Elethane Soul Raid. One swung into Gorath looking for swords on two dice, which is even less chance to hit than him. Oh, but he just rolled two crits, so, you know, that's pretty easy to do, actually, as it turns out. Yeah, sure, you're an ancient vampire, but are you a crab with one big claw? Eh. So, that is flat two damage. Even if he'd rolled a crit on his defense, can't beat two of them anyway, so there was literally no way to stop that damage coming in. Doesn't kill him, but that is half of Gorath's health gone. And in the power phase, nothing played by either side. Well, Prince Deval lost his patience and was the second activation for the Crimson Court. His movement of four hexes was enough to get into enemy territory on objective one. Adjacent to Tamiel, he swung that sword of his three dice looking for hammers. Got one hammer, one crit. That is actually a success on his defense roll. Doesn't beat the crit though. So that is two of Tamiel's three health and gone in that hit. And that was taking into consideration cover as well. But... No drive back is being taken advantage of. Nothing played in the power phase. So at the end of that power phase for the Crimson Court, the show token as a reaction is being replaced with the fish. Now the fish again can't activate, but it does provide support. So for instance, if Tamiel lives and gets a chance to strike back, he would be counting as having support from the fish being there. Oh, now we're getting into the meaty stuff of Elethane's soul raid with Elethane himself activating, doing a charge action from where he was, moving three of his four potential hexes and swinging point blank into Gorath, supported by Doing Claw. Three dice looking for hammers, so all three of these are a success. One crit, one hammer, and the single support, which is provided by the gigantic monstrous crab. And all said and done, Gorath rolled a crit on his defense dice, that's great, but unfortunately, those additional two successes mean that Elethane does two damage. So a bunch of stuff happens. One thing that doesn't need to happen, that could have happened, is that if Elethine gets a kill with that attack, it has a special rule called Soul Harvest, where if Tamiel was dead, he can get brought back. But he lived, so not, it doesn't do anything right now. One glory for the kill, obviously, but two objective cards are scoring off the back of that kill. Uh, Taker of Souls, first of all. Scores immediately after your leader's range one attack action, takes an enemy out of action, yep. But also Merciless Raiders, as well, because Gorath was still in enemy territory, or, you know, friendly territory to him, but enemies to Elethane. Scribbles immediately after a friendly fighter's attack action made as part of a charge action that takes an enemy out of action in enemy territory. So, yeah, they scored three glory off that one activation, two of which are immediately being spent on two upgrades for Elethane. He's being given Unstoppable Fury, which we saw last time. He gets to reroll an attack die as part of a charge action. And he's also been given his unique called Lure Light, which is something to hopefully remember. When an enemy fighter is taken out of action while adjacent to Elethane, that fighter picks one. Elethane gains one glory point, or that player discards a power card. Because they have a lot of ways of making uh, power cards get discarded and stuff like that. So it's just another way of making that kind of happen. So really effective activation there from Elethane. 
Well, the vampires had to come back swinging after that, and they sure did. Velas von Fien activated, did a charge. Again, they all move four hexes. Everybody moves four hexes, more or less. The only exception is, well, the fish, because it can't move, and the crab. Everyone else is four hexes. He slipped, or rather, she slipped by there to help Deval try and finish off Tamiel. Two dice looking for hammers. She got two single supports with Deval being there. Those kind of successes. So does his defense roll of a single support because of the fish. But the two successes beat the one. So that is Tamiel. There, again, if anything gets a kill at point blank range later in the match, Tamiel will come back. Which is pretty powerful. So that's one glory for the kill. But it's actually a second glory for a superlative skill. Right there. Scorbus immediately after a friendly fighter's attack action that takes a target out of action if the attack roll only contains successes or they had no counters, uh, wound counters or hunger tokens. And speaking of hunger tokens, it's going to deny them a different card they could have scored in the end phase, but if you get a kill you have to remove at least one hunger token. Now on the plus side that means Bellis von Fein is going to inspire at the end of the round, or is it the end of the phase? End of the action phase, yes, yeah, so when it moves into the end phase. So for turn two, she will be inspired. So that's a bit of a downside, but hey, they got two glory. Both of it is being spent. Deval is being given Deathly Majesty, which is minus one die to attack actions that target him from range one. Actually, is it? No, it's just any attack action. They don't have to be next to him. Yeah, minus one, oh no, adjacent fires. Yeah, they do have to be next to him. But gives him a bit of protection. And Velis von Fein has been given Mirror Duelist, so she always counts as being supported by at least one person, which is pretty powerful. And nothing is being played by Elethane Soul Raid there. Final activation of round one for Elethane Soul Raid was Furan, that's just the name I'm going to stick with. Four hexes moving adjacent to her boss here. Three dice looking for hammers against Prince Duval, although she actually should have lost one die because of that upgrade he just got. Um, which is unfortunate because we can't say for sure the one success she got would have been the one that got through but unfortunately we'll just have to run with it say one of the hammers didn't count but whoops he only just got it and he did roll a single support as his block oh yeah sorry the reason that the single support is counting is because the fish is there it's the stupid fish it's always the stupid fish uh, Prince of Val is not supported however so that damage does actually get through it doesn't kill him it's just two damage leaving him on one health remaining and the final activation of the first round, Crimson Court activated a nice curse bar, and also it's just a big brawl in No Man's Land, isn't it? He charged into No Man's Land, adjacent to Prince Deval, but also adjacent to some enemies, two of them in fact. Swinging into Furin, Furan, what I, I've already confused myself about what I said I would go with. Either way, swung at her, three dice looking for swords, got two successes thanks to Deval supporting, so a crit and a success. She rolls two defense dice looking for dodges and she is also supported, doubly so, and roll two successes but the crit trumps the results so she takes two damage leaving her as we go to the end of round one with one health remaining as well, though I think uh, the soul raid team did a lot better than the vampires there in terms of like taking hits and living, but let's see what scores in the end phase. So, at the end of round one, let's handle the vampires first, uh, because they technically scored a card right at the end there with Anais's activation, so it happened before going into the end phase, so we'll just cover that real quick. They scored Crimson Hounds for a single point of glory, meaning that as we went into the end phase, it was even Stevens three each. Scores immediately after an activation where a friendly fighter made an attack the action that targeted an enemy fighter adjacent to one or more friendly fighters, which is what happened right there, because Deval was adjacent to his target, so... Covered that. In the end phase, they are scoring one additional glory for worthy opponents. You score this if one or more opponents has equal to or greater than your glory, and they had equal to. They would have had more than had that not happened first, but it was equal, so that scores and takes them to four. Elethane Soul Raid. They are scoring a single glory for Tides of Death, which is a fun name for a card. Score this in the end phase if three or more friendly fighters each have one or more charge tokens. All the surviving friendly fires have charge tokens except the fish, and that is three of them up here. So that scores, meaning as we go into round two of three, it is actually even Stevens. Both sides have four glory each. Oh, and as we go into round two, the entirety of Elethane's Soul Raid inspire for this round, and Velis von Fein for the Crimson Court inspires as well. As we start round two of three, Elethane's Soul Raid are going first again, and I kid you not, the Crimson Court's uh, roll for priority 
was all hammers again. I wish it was on camera because the statistical improbability of that has to be astronomical, but I swear to you it was. Round 2 gets off to an explosive start for Elethane activating for his warband and moving around going for that Hail Mary kill on Duval, losing one die because of the Deathly Mastery upgrade Duval has for himself, but getting supported Duval himself, oh, and by the fish as well, uh, is not supported. Two dice looking for uh, hammers and managed to get the crit, which Duval did not block. Also on his inspired side, Elethane has cleave and ensnare, so it would have had to be a crit. That counts as a fail as a result of those. So, unfortunately for Prince Duval, he is out of there. Now, that means a bunch of stuff happens. First of all, one glory for the kill. And, because he killed someone in point blank range, welcome back, Tamiel, on a starting hex, full health by the way. So, not that 3 health is massive, but still. So he's back in pog form, right there. The lure light upgrade for him also kicked in, which is if you kill an adjacent enemy, that controlling, uh, the player that controls that killed fighter chooses that either Elethane's soul raid gains one additional glory point for the kill, or they discard a power card. They discard a power card that they can no longer use without Deval being on the table because he's the only wizard they have and it was a magic spell. But that was uh, triggering the trap card called Smothered Memories, which actually just scores for one glory anyway, which will hopefully be in focus. There we are. Scorbus immediately after an opponent discards a card from their hand in the action phase without paying, playing it or scoring it. So that actually gives them another glory. I think that covers everything that triggered. The kill gives the glory, they scored one glory on that because of the upgrade of the lure light he had and Tamiel is back on the table. There's now just two surviving vampires with only one of the two being inspired as well. Then after that there was a bunch of glory being spent, in fact three glory was spent in total by Elethane's soul raid, leaving them with just one unspent glory. So Dune Claw the Crab gets given ethereal uh, Ether, ether Sea Predator, or so I think that's how it's said. It means that his claw attack, sh attack actions have ensnare on them now. He also has a reaction where if any enemy fighter moves next to him, you roll a die, and if it's a hammer, their, end, their move ends immediately. Just a little upgrade for him there. Uh, Sanguine Peril is being given to Furin, F Furan, whatever, to try and make them live a little bit longer. It is reduce the damage dealt to this fighter by adjacent enemy fighter's attack actions to one well, from by one to a minimum of one. Although just realised she's got one health left, so that actually will not help her. Oh well, too late now. And Born from Agony is being given to the newly resurrected Tamiel, which means he has plus one wound and lethal hexes can't hurt him. So he actually has four wounds now instead of three. So he's just come back stronger. He's like a Saiyan. Two upgrades are being spent. The only unto spent glory they had on the Crimson Court side to give two more upgrades to Velis Von Vayne, or rather to give her any upgrades because she didn't have any yet. Oh no, she did, she had, uh, she had Mirror Duelist, yeah. So she's been given the Von Marusi armor, long text, but she's not bloodthirsty or blood starved, so it's just the first part. If this fighter is inspired, reduce all damage dealt by one to a minimum of one, so that will keep her alive longer. And she's also been given Undying Evil, which is essentially a chance to get out of jail free. The first time you would die, you roll a block die, and if it's a shield, you discard this card instead of actually dying. The combat sequence just ends. So that gives her, um, as I say, a, a get out of jail free, essentially. Anaya's Curseborn activated for the Crimson Court, just staying still doing an attack action, trying to swing into and kill Furan there, rolling three dice, looking for swords. Got two of them, but she rolled a crit on one of her two defense dice, meaning that that just trumps all other results, and she lived, which is catastrophic for the vampires. This is setting them up for failure, something fierce. Well, it was a simple second activation for the soul raids. Doing Claw activated and did a movement action, so he was behind Anias, supporting against him, but didn't actually do a charge. In the power card phase, crushing pressure was applied to uh, Velis von Fane instead, so choose one enemy fighter, that fighter's player picks one. In the next activation, the chosen fighter has minus two move to a minimum of zero and minus two from their attack actions to a minimum of one or they discard a power card. Now, there is a simple way around that. You just don't activate her next and just do an ice again, which is most likely what's going to happen. But it's just to try and make sure that she's kind of st uh, stuck there, tied down for at least another activation. Oh, you hate to see it. An ice activated. He did the exact same thing again, swinging into... Uh, Furan and attempting to kill her, 
got one success that time. She got a crit again on one of her two defense dice and wah wah, she lives again. Well, the giant crab activated again and moved precisely one hex, but in doing that second movement action, he is also still supporting against an ice, by the way. Surging Tide has scored for one glory, which just is a friendly fire does their second or subsequent move action in the same phase. Simple. So that gives them their seventh glory, still playing against four for the Crimson Court. Well, third time is the charm, as it turns out, because it was a nice curse born yet again. He swung into Furan and has managed to kill her. It only took rolling two crits on three dice, you know how it is, but she is out of there. And she gives up one glory. Specifically, Anais is removing only one of his hunger tokens, meaning he still has one on him, so he's not going to inspire at the end of the phase. And that glory they just got, which is their fifth, it is being spent to give Vampiric Might to Velas. She is getting just pimped out with every upgrade going. Because she's inspired, it means that she gets plus one damage to her range one and range two attack actions, which is not in focus for a start, but also pretty scary. So scary, the camera just refuses to show you the text. So, oh, there we go. So, she's now doing base damage of three, which is a one-shot against most things on the enemy side. So, that's scary. She is now very dangerous. Final activation of the second round for Elethane's Soul Raid was the recently reborn Tamiel, who did a charge action up around here and used his range two charging spear attack, uh, which means, well, oh, that does two damage base on his inspired side actually does it have the rule for more damage on a charge it does not it just has the riptide rule for pushing so fair enough he got two successes because he is supported and an is whiffed so that is just two flat damage of his four health and that is their second round done no power cards played by either side and now it's over to oh either vampire could still move and do like a charge action so i'm not sure who's going yet so of course it was Velas von Fein who activated and this actually shows the quite scary form of a vampire really really powered up. She did a charge action, she came around here uh, to where you can see her right there and swung into Doing Claw there and it's just two dice looking for hammers. Obviously you can see she didn't roll a hammer there on her inspired side, she also has cleave and snare as default. But she's supported by Anais and she has the mirror duelist upgrade. So she always counts as having at least one supported fire, so that means this double support was a success. And uh, Doing Claw is not supported, and he was looking for blocks, but she has cleave and ensnare, so it counts as a, a failure. So normally she just does two damage, but thanks to the Vampiric Might, and her being point blank and inspired, actually does three, and insta kills poor Mr. Krabs. No Krabby Patties for you. So that is one glory for the kill. No card scored there I believe and that takes us to the end phase for the second round. Well it's a pretty simple end phase as it turns out because technically neither side is scoring anything at all. Um, when Anais got attacked and did not die, Spirited Attempt should have scored so we're just retroactively applying that now because nothing on the board state has changed so it still counts. Scores immediately after an enemy fighter's attack action that deals damage to a friendly fire if the friendly fire is not killed. So they scored one glory for that and it's a surge so they have drawn another card but didn't equal any extra scoring opportunities so they're ending the second round with seven glory and because of Elethane's soul raid not scoring anything in that end phase they're also ending the round with seven glory so as we go into the third and final round it is completely even seven points apiece as we begin the final round it's a clean sweep for Elethane's soul raid going first they are taking first activation again so Elethane himself moved into position with a charge and swung at Anias, needing hammers, got that plus a crit and he was supported, although not supported by two so that actually does miss, but Anias whiffed and I forgot to mention but Elethane and Tamiel and the fish are all uninspired now. It's still enough though that there is one vampire left standing that gives up one more glory, no objective cards scored off of that though and... Yeah, no power cards played either, so I'm just moving on. Well, it seems like Anais apparently needed to really kind of live through that to opportun uh, to provide opportunities for additional card scoring, so Velas is just getting in there. Just <laughs> teeth and claw, sword and steel, whatever. She did a charge action into No Man's Land and swung right for Elethane himself. Two dice, needing hammers, got 
two successes because she has that upgrade so that single support counts he with his defense roll with a single support she normally does two damage but with her vampiric might upgrade she does three so he has one health remaining um, they both have one uh, four health so because of Tamiel having that born from agony upgrade so it didn't really matter who he, she went after so she just was was swinging for the boss kill there and didn't quite achieve it but definitely got him close and as much as Elethane would want to get out of there he can't because he's got a charge token so Tamiel has to be the one to activate he charged adjacent swung into Velis two dice needing hammers he got two hammers she whiffed her defense roll it would normally do two damage um, but because of the Von Marusi armor, it gets reduced down to just one of her four health. And sure enough, there you have it. Velis Von Fein activated, swung in, and that crit is the cincher. Elthane is out of there, and that does mean he gives up one glory. So everything remains even at eight apiece. And, well, not counting the fish, because the fish doesn't do anything. It's one on one, the resurrected Tamiel versus an incredibly buffed up and scary Velis von Payne with three health remaining. He can't kill her in one attack, and he can't he's already got charge token as well. So his options are limited. Tamiel did a move action, moving back exactly one hex out of the danger zone because Velis only has range one. And then in the power phase it played Chill Mist, which means during her next activation she has minus one move to a minimum of zero and can't attack at range, although that's not relevant for her, just to offer himself a bit more protection. He can't kill her in one go, so she just did a move action adjacent to him. Obviously he can just move again uh, if he so chooses. Well, let's see what happens. Well, would you look at that? He actually stayed still, did an attack action, took a swing at her, got one success, which she deftly blocked with a crit. So that is Elephant Soul Raid's game over. Um, Velis can't kill him in one swing, even with that extra damage she's doing, thanks to the upgrade he has. Um, even if she was somehow able to knock him into the hex, the lethal hex there, born from agony is plus one wound and immunity to lethal hexes. So unless there's a power card that can help, I think this is a stalemate. Yeah, and there you have it. She took a swing and it didn't do, well, it technically did do something, but in the greater sense, in the meta sense for the match, it didn't matter because no matter what the outcome was there, Tamiel couldn't die. So the only variable was would Tamiel end the game adjacent to Velis, Velius, whatever, Velis. And whether he did or didn't, there would still be a card scored. And no matter which of those cards scored, it means that Elethane's Soul Raid wins the game. We'll, we'll go over it in detail in a second in the end phase. So the first thing to cover in the end phase here is Hunger Tokens. I believe Velis got a kill there because she killed Elethane. Yeah, so that would have taken away the one Hunger Token she had. Um, even if it had taken away only one and she still had one left, it would have only made a difference of a score of one because she could have scored on the chase. So it doesn't particularly matter with what we're about to discuss. So let's just count it as not. And that means we go into this end phase with both sides being completely even still on eight each. But as I just explained, whether Tamiel finished adjacent or not means that cards can score. As it turns out, he, he ended the game adjacent to her, which means dead or doomed is scoring for three. So they actually scored 11 in the end. Scorpius in the third end phase if each enemy fighter is either out of action or adjacent to one or more friendly fighters. So, there you go. Oh, yeah, and it's each enemy fighter. And then there's also the Utter Isolation, which could have scored. Had he been pushed away, he, Velis, and the fish would all be separated. And that means Utter Isolation would have scored for two, which still would have trumped the potential one if assuming the hunger count for her was wrong. So they either would have won by one in that situation, or two. But I think we got the hunger right, meaning it was either a difference of two or three. So there was nothing that could have happened there in that final activation to stop either one of those card scoring. It was just pick your poison, basically. How much do you want to lose by? So that does mean that Tamiel and the stupid fish win the day. It's fun to remember as we finish up here that Tamiel died early on. The only reason he's on the table again is because of Elethane's ability to resurrect him, which is connected to just his stat card. It wasn't the upgrade. Uh, the lure light thing was, was just for glory or cards to discard so yeah the his standard rule of just killing someone adjacent to him lets him bring back Tamiel means you can be pretty suicidal with Tamiel as long as you're not fighting a warband where every single person in it is super tanky 
So that is something to definitely consider taking advantage of. The fish was in a good position to provide support there as well. I, I feel like he was more useful than in their first showing. But either way, that is going to do it. Thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to show your support if you would like to see more Warhammer Underworlds on the channel by liking or subscribing. Or if you want to go above and beyond and can afford to do so, consider pressing the thanks button or becoming a channel member. Or check out the channel sponsor. Anything you buy via the affiliate link, I get a little bit for. And that means we both get something out of it. And it helps keep the lights on. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And see you next time. Ta-ta for now.